Uh, how long do I need to speak? Yeah. Is this loud enough? Oh, loud. Yeah, that's fine. Loud, yeah. loud enough? Yep. Yeah, this room goes fine Okay. for that. Okay. All right, well, thank you, everybody, for being here. Um, great turnout. My name is Debbie Green. I work in the advancement office here at Hope College, and I'm just going to um, say, again, thank you, and then welcome to our speaker, Mark Harris, who graduated from Hope in 1985 with a business administration degree, has spent most of his career in the Dallas, Texas area. He actually is from Cedar Rapids originally, and he graduated from Jefferson High School. Recently um, sold his business and is embarking on a new chapter, I guess, in his life, which he'll, I think, talk more about. So, um, and you're coming back in November for an entrepreneur um, seminar speaker podium series. Hopefully you want me to come back. Yeah. <laughs> so without any further ado, I will turn it over to Mark. And as you know, we're recording for the book publisher. Uh, but feel free if you to ask any questions if you have any. Right. Great. Thanks, Debbie. Finished my healthcare career, uh, 24 years, had my own company, and was able to sell a few of my hospitals. The last six sold for over $60 million. So from there, the starting where I told you and where I am today, I want to talk about the how to. So the how to is what I call the magic test. I see some people smiling, smirking, and it is true uh, because guess what? Life doesn't need to be all that complicated. Uh, magic dust is a term that you've all seen in uh, TV, newspaper. You all see had the had the magic dust that day. Uh, specifically in sports, you see it all the time. Super Bowl, magic catch, Super Bowl winners are. Uh, of course, they all go Disney World, but they have the uh, magic offense, the magic defense on that day, and they have a magic team. Baseball, same thing. You have the World Series. Great pitching, great hitting, that's how you win. 
That's called magic dust, folks, okay? It's the dust that lets the future uh, students here today. The students, when you get a, uh, an A in exam, I would call that magic dust. For me, it would have been magic dust. But for you, the dust might have been the extra study you did, the notes that you took, going to all your classes, going all the classes now. Um, and guess what? That's called the dust. The A would be the magical moment when the magic and the dust came together. Got it? So when uh, the book, which I happen to write, actually is called Sprinkling the Magic Dust, ironically, huh? So the book, uh, Sprinkling the Magic Dust, is a collection of stories of people that I've had the association with and fortunate uh, opportunity to be around in the last 30 years of my life. And specifically, a couple stories. The first one, anybody heard of Micro Solution? Micro Solution. No? Okay. Um, that was my first employer. And Micro Solutions had a group of people that uh, all had their own magic dust. Specifically, Martin was a COO, and he was the uh, perfectionist, organizer, detail guy. There was uh, Sally and Tony, both of them, one's a CPA, one's an MBA, from New York and somewhere else. They were super smart people. They were in sales. Um, then there was Mike and Scott. Mike and Scott were both technical guys. Kind of like you guys are called computer engineers now. We called them delivery and installation guys back then. Uh, but computer engineers, smart guys. And the last lady, the reason I'm telling you all this, this is the team. The last lady was a girl by the name of Debbie. And Debbie was a little rural East Texas girl that answered the phone. As small as that sounds, all the customers used to comment about talking to that sweet little East Texas voice when they would call in. Uh, but that collection of people was with the company from the start to the end for, for eight years. That company sold for $20 million. But the person that uh, I want to talk about, that I worked with personally, his name was Mark also. And I was there for a year and a half of that eight years. During that, uh, that company, eight years later, it probably wouldn't be a great story if there's only just one office, one town, Dallas, and went from zero to 20 million. Okay? But, but the story goes, that other Mark, which some of you probably know pretty pretty well now, his name is Mark Cuban. So from Shark Tank. So Mark Cuban was 28 years old at the time. I was 22. And Mark hired me on the spot when I went into the interview. And uh, a year and a half later, we went from 3 million to 10 million in revenue. And uh, a couple stories about that. So you guys know that this is a real story. When uh, three months out of school, coming from uh, Cedar Rapids, Iowa, down to Dallas, I remember Cuban uh, said, hey, here's a list of the top 100 companies in Dallas. And you and uh, Sally and Tony divvy them up. I said, okay. So they, of course, they know the area because they're 28, 29-year-old people. And they've been there for five or six years. So, you know, I'm just this punk kid from Iowa, so I don't know anything about the companies. So I'm going to go knock on doors and ask if they are interested in doing local area networks. That was the our little differentiation in the market. Instead of just selling computers, we were going to do local area networks where you share files. Back in 1985, that was a new thing, sharing files. <laughs> um, so anyway, my third month out of school, uh, I'm at a, at a big uh, corporate uh, company that had all the solar on the United States. It was, it was a real estate development company. And uh, the guy says, uh, you know, Mark, uh, we, we can uh, put these uh, local area networks all around the United States. We're going to be the first one. And you might want to bring in your boss to see what kind of discount we can get. And I said, okay. So I'm back to the office and said, hey, Mark, why don't you come with me to this client? And he says, what's going on? Give him the scoop. He comes to the meeting. And you know, typical form, Mark Cuban, that you guys all know on TV. And he's like 6'3", you know, I'm about six foot. He comes to the meeting, and, 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 and back then we called it MIS, right? But now you guys call it IT. Uh, MIS is management. So the guy sends in, sends in, goes, uh, so yeah, Mark, we told up who we think we'd uh, like to start with, but it's like a million dollar purchase fee, purchase order. How would that be? 
or cubic centimeters. You get a big discount for that. <laughs> and that's your negotiator on uh, Shark Tank. But anyway, no, Mark is a phenomenal person. He was an incredible motivator. He was a great uh, leader, and he was a lot of fun. Uh, after I got that, uh, after I got that big client, I told Mark two weeks later, I said, "Hey, now these guys want to go out to eat, and uh, they got like five or six of them. Y'all want to get paid twelve hundred dollars a month? Nineteen eighty-five grad, fourteen thousand on a salary." Plus commission though. And uh, Mark was here. Just grab the company card. So he gives me the card. So Micro Solutions, Mark Cuban. I go, well, how am I supposed to sign it? He goes, your name's Mark. Just put Mark and put a line. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, uh, these, are, these are just a couple pictures. Uh, we were, uh, we're seeing ticket holders, obviously. We live in Dallas. And this actually is one of my daughters with uh, Mark Cuban this year. That was last year. And I hadn't seen Cuban in 30 years. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> okay, so uh, yeah, uh, Zoe went up, Zoe's my daughter. She went up to Mark Cuban and she said, Hi, my name's Roy Harris. And uh, he says, Hey, Zoe, nice to meet you. She goes, I believe you used to work with my father at Micro Solutions. And he goes, Okay, I'll fight. Who's your dad? And she said, Mark Harris. And he stopped and said, Absolutely, I know your dad. How old is your dad? And I was five feet away, standing behind a six foot nine uh, basketball player. And uh, I said, I go, right here, Cuban. He said, oh, Mark, he has a big hug. And, and uh, he said, what did you do? Because I know you killed it, whatever you did, because you killed it when you were with us. I said, Cuban, let me tell you, I didn't hit three billion, but I did okay. And I said, but I got to tell you, um, I'm going to write a book, and I'm going to mention my solutions. It's one of the chapters. 